Aha! Gemini! I hope you're well. I hope everyone's having a lovely day, even though it's probably freezing for and cold, because it is here. Yes, it's cold here in France at the moment. Apparently, we're going to get milder temperatures on Wednesday. Something to look forward to, so I better get the old frost heater in the camber. Oh, let's turn that off. <laughs> Oh, there me. That's Sorry about that. <laughs> I do that every time. I keep forgetting to turn the volume off. Oh dear. Oh well. So to me. So in this live stream, what we're going to do is um, we're going to make some bolts. Yeah, I'm going to make two bolts. These are only quite small ones. They're one fifty mil long. They're actually for a customer on Etsy. Um, and they're very similar. They're not the same, but they're quite similar to. These bolts over here, they're wooden bolts, made of wood. Like on that door over there, a bit like that. That's one of the bigger ones, that would be about 300 mil ones. So um, we're going to be making 150s. So they're small, but we're making two of them. So that's basically uh, what we're going to do in the live stream. Yes, the door still needs to be finished. But I need to make these, so I'm going to make them. Out of two bits we've got here, a bit of oak and another bit of oak. And we're going to make these into bolts. As I've grabbed it out of the rack, this one here um, has been planed on one face, but the back is still rough sawn. And this one is just sawn on all faces. So we've got to clean them up, what have you. Um, and I'll show you how I make this into um, bolts. Wooden bolt, wood bo wooden, wooden bolts, wooden bolts or door latches or whatever, or cupboard latches. And we actually use these quite a bit in our house, actually. We've got quite a few of them in our house. And I will actually use one of those as well, for aesthetic reasons more than anything, on this door. But also I'll have a big old wooden a bit similar to well similar to this one, but this is a this one's a bit naff because it was used in the workshop. But um a bit similar to this one, but bigger. So a big chunky wooden door grab handle. On here as well. So um but not that one, because that's shit. <laughs> anyway, I'm on a different camera today. I brought in the camera that I was using in my ridiculously long live stream last night. Six hours I was streaming for. Six hours. That's a record for me. And do you know what stopped me? I used up all my, because um, we've got limited bro um, internet because we're on the uh, 4G system and we're allowed 210 gigabits a month and we've got two cards. <laughs> and the internet ran out. <laughs> One of the cards. So, um, yeah, that's what stopped me. Ten about 10 minutes before I got to six hours. So, you know, so I left it running. I didn't disconnect the stream. Nothing was happening, but I didn't just get. I was just talking to people. And I, so I did this six hours. Yeah. Not officially, but yeah, kind of. Anyway, um, so that's what we're going to do in this live stream. We're going to make a bolt, a wooden bolt. And this camera's a bit crazy because um, if I want to, I can. Well, I can make it track. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit silly, really. So if I, if I got the, oh, I'm over here now, and I'm over here. And that's all, that's all very well, but it's, it's cropped everything in to do it. So it's all done digitally, so it's not great. So um, I'll probably just do that, because I think I'll make you dizzy. <laughs> I've still got the camera up, up above, but I'm playing about. I've managed to move things about in my workshop, which is, which is good. And um, I'm very pleased that I'm able to, with that new card that we put in the other day, I'm very happy, you know, um, the USB 3 card. I'm very happy that this camera is actually working on it. Because this one's, I'm more happy having this camera in the workshop than the face cam. Because the face cam that I was using here, um, earlier is, it's, it's quite pricey, and this is a, quite a dusty environment. So um, it's bad enough using that one. Yeah, well, that's not too bad. It's not, it's not, not. It's a, it's a Logitech Stream Cam, which isn't too expensive, but the face cam are, are quite pricey. And I think this is going to be better because it focuses, whereas the face cam is fixed focus. So um, it's great on your face, but as soon as you're in the background or something, it's a little bit like the edge is not that great. But it's, um, it's still a really good camera, mind. So that's what we're going to do. Right. We've got to rip them down to sizes. So I'm going to put you onto the... Uh, we'll try, let's go over to the other camera. Let's go to the aerial cam. Donk. <laughs> Which I've shifted. And I've managed to move things about with the microphone that as well. I've um, well, I'll, I'll put the microphone above the, because the microphone is also the input for my wireless microphone. So it's um, yeah, it seems to work. Anyway, we got these bits of wood. So first of all, I'm gonna do a bit of mark now, or should I just rip it down? I think that might be what we do next in a sense actually. But let's do a bit of marking first, so give you an idea of what we're up to. 
So this bit here is going to be the shoot. This will be the shoot bolt, which is literally only going to be 150 millimeters long. But I'm going to lay for the fact that I'm going to probably make some more. This, and I'm going to make two of these. Um, <clears throat> out of this piece, I need to be able to make the shoot bolt itself, but also the knob that goes on top of the shoot bolt. Yeah. So I have to allow for that. So if I rip this, let's say for instance, we 150. So I cut this to allowing for the fact we've got shakes in the end here. I don't know if you can see that. On well, the end of this piece of wood, there's basically little splits in there and little splits in there. And that's because that's the um, saw on edge of the timber where it's been drawing out on the rack where you stick them up. Now sticking them up is literally where you stack them all up, you put um, sticks in between, you know, spaces. So let the air flow through, called, we call stickering. So what we'll do is we'll remove that by saying, okay, we don't want that one. Oh, I'm pen, it's better. Um, remove that, like so. And then we'll measure that and allow for a little bit of excess. A bit for mistakes, but also I've got the knob to make as well. So I'm gonna, instead of 150, I'm going to go for 200. So I'll rip that off at 200. Do, 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 do. And this will do two two bolts because these ones are cutting small. They're thirty mil wide instead of forties because my bigger ones are forty mil wide. So yeah, they'll they'll there's plenty of room there. So I get two out of that. But this piece, which is obviously got to go through the plane, or I can do it by hand or whatever, um, it's, it will actually be cut into lots of short pieces. And each one has three, so I only six of these pieces to make the two shoot bolts. This is all oak. And, um, but first of all, we need to clean this up because it's, it's probably used about much of what I imagine. But that needs to be one for the plane because at the moment it's obviously just sawn edges everywhere. And this bit here also has sawn edges on the back face. But I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I might just do that by hand because I don't want to take too much off this because it's pretty much the thickness that I normally do it at. About 24, not 25, maybe 23 or 24 mil. Have a look on this case, in this case. Yeah, 23 mil. I don't want to take too much. I'll get down to 22 mil. If I try and run through the plane now, as it is, I'll remove more material in this area as well as, as this area because hair is lower and I'll end up losing a lot of thickness here. And I, me being a skin flint, and I'll save as much material as I possibly can for the next project, I don't want to waste what I can out of that one. But what considering all I'm going to do is rip this down into bolts. So we'll, we'll probably run that, we'll run that down by hand with a hand plane in the voice. First of all, let's just chop that down. Ugh. Oh no, I've got a splinter! Oh no, that's why some people wear gloves. I find gloves dangerous, apart from the fact you don't get splinters. Now that's out. So that's got to be run for the uh, thickness in a minute, we'll do that together. I'm going to run over hard, let's just start go off the other camera. Boom. Oh, we're back again. Oh yes, we're back again. So let's bring you over there. So we're going to be over there on that machine over there. That's where DeWalt radio alarm saw. And I need to get another camera for here. You know. That could be as and when. So obviously at the moment I don't have that many people watching, so I've got to, you know, you've got to be a little bit sort of sensible, isn't you? <laughs> Then we're going to go to the table saw over there. Oh, yeah, we're quite good. It's like, what's a tracking camera? And actually, on the gimbal or something that tracks. I wonder if my gimbal camera would do that. Probably not. So I'd like to see. I like, I like a camera above there. Um, something like the little, yeah, you know, Logitech would be okay. And then one over there as well. I think that would be quite nice. Because then I can, and then then do voice activation. Because that'd be fun. <laughs> camera number three, please. Saw cam. There I go. Raz cam. Radio alarm saw cam. Raz. Bench cam. Bum, 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 bum. I'm just ripping these down to just over 30 mil. And that'll lay for a little bit of cleaning up as well. Make sure there's enough room to get 30 mil out of both sides. There is. Right, now technically speaking with these saws, you, when you um, run a piece of wood through a table saw, that blade's too high. 
Now the reason that's too, it's too high, what happened is there's going to be too much lift at the back and potentially you can lift your bit of wood like that and throw it back at you, which you don't want to happen. So it's better to um, be just, just above ideally. And only caveat with that is if you're uh, cutting thin plywood. Because um, if you're cutting thin ply, uh, it can be bendy. It can bend as you use it and you end up running the blade under it, make the whole thing spin round because it's happened to me before. If I change the saw, there's any reason why to be why well, any reason why I would be honest, but I would like uh, sometime in the future maybe get um, a saw called a saw stop and basically it throws a blade into the deck so it's really safe. Right. You touch the blade, it literally just doop, gone. Blade's gone. Not your finger. There's two little bolts there. They will be the, they will be the, uh, well, the shafts, the bolts, the, or what you call them. All right. And this bit, I just want to just skim that over with. Oh, my thicknesser. Oh, oh, my thicknesser, which is my little multico fixer. Thick thicknesser. It's um, it's a single phase. It's quite handy. I'll get the camera right place in a minute. There you go. It'll go through one end and out of the other. Oh. But follow through. Oh look, he shot! Oh no, I didn't say that, did I? Oh, I just did. Right. <laughs> it's quite an old machine, but I've had it quite a few years now. So I'm very pleased with it. Anyway, I haven't actually had a look to see who's here. Dee, 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 dee. Hello, Negan to Schmidt. Hope you're well, buddy. Right, I need to find my chat. Let's pop that chat out, shall we? I had a glitch on the internet uh, earlier. Oh, hello there. Hello, hello, hello. hello how, are you, how are you doing? Hello, Lefty Boater. Evening, all everyone. Gingers, hello, Gingers. In the United States. Oh, I get phone screws for the. Oh, what? What, <laughs> what have I missed? Uh, <laughs> pretty much all turned out pretty well. <laughs> she was quite fun. That was quite fun doing. Only thing is, I think that dragged on a bit. I think I need to pick a, a little bit less. Um, laborious subject maybe maybe just do something a bit simpler and also i'm learning so obviously i'm so and also i'm yapping but i feel like i should be yapping more that's what i feel I'm not yapping enough and i think some people start tailing off quite quickly so what you gotta look at when you do your bit you know planing that grain if you can see that grain the grain goes in a certain direction you want to stroke the grain in that direction. If you go against it, you get tear out. If I go that way, if the blade is cutting in that direction, that'll tear the fibres. Oh, it looks so beautiful! Right, next time. Same difference. This side's a bit different though. If you actually can sit a bit more clear here, you see it's grain, it it reverses. So in that case it's coming in that direction. So you walk plane that way, but that side, nearer that end, is going that way. Well, the majority of it is going that way, so I'm gonna treat it as such. So we'll go that way around. Pass the plane across its full width. 
Oh, no, I just want you to do this face here. Check on the grind. That way. Obviously, there's no reason why you can't do that by hand, you know? It's only a little bit of wood. But still got it, while we use it. But we'll bring you back to the bench. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, to the bench. To the bench. Bum, 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 bum. Oh. Right. So we've got Orc, hello, Orc, evening, Orc. Oh, Mad Monk 33, hello, buddy. I managed to drag it out to six hours. I managed to get my six hours <laughs> last night. Just about. And what caused it was, it wasn't a problem with the internet, apart from the fact that I used all my, all my allowance, my, all my 210 gigabits. I ate it all. That's why it went, it went basically it went into limper mode. It went really, really slow. It couldn't cope with it, obviously, so it just froze. So uh, that's what was the problem with that. So I just swapped the cards over, but obviously can't do it midstream. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Just got the notification. Oh, that was on. Cool. Jasper, hello, buddy. We're making some bolts, is what we're doing. We're making wooden bolts. Wood mongery. Not iron mongery, wood mongery. Yeah. Out of wood. So, um, basically, I've just ripped these down. So, I'm making two of them. It's actually for uh, an Etsy customer. So hopefully, they turn out well. Um, so, we're making two little shoot bolts, which are going to be similar to the ones over here. Just, I'm sorry if you already heard me say this, but I'll say it again. If you look at that door there, there's a shoot bolt on that door. And it basically, it, it go, yeah, fine. Look at that. Simples. I've got that one over there on, on my uh, medicine cabinet. Yeah, I, I, I've even got, see, look, I've, I've got health and safety. You see that? Yeah, there's, there's a cabinet with a big cross on it. It's got medications and stuff in there. Drugs. No, bandages. Bandages! I can honestly say I've never tried drugs. The only drugs I've ever had. Do you think there's drugs? alcohol? <laughs> I suppose it's a form of drug, isn't it? Dee, 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 dee. Right. So let's go to the aerial cam again. Oh, does it hurt the Westminster Tory? Oh, West Monster Tory. Oh my God, do you know what's going on? I've just done a short which I'm going to put up for the other channel. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit stupid, really. But uh, don't these... Don't they understand that it's not just the left that are getting hurt by these new um, bills that are going through, you know, the protest bill? No, it's the right as well. Everybody gets hurt by it. It affects everybody. No matter what so side of the political spectrum you lay, lie, lay, or whatever you're doing with it, you know. It's madness. Only if the chain block kicks in. Oh, it kicks back. The chain blocks. Chain kicks back. What, 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 what? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's go to the aerial cam. Aerial cam. See those this little camera on here. This is just a little Logitech. Um, uh, what is it? It's a nine twenty, I think it is. It's the one that everyone recommends do, recommended during um lockdowns and stuff to do all your uh, FaceTiming and you know meet and all that. And it's um I wouldn't recommend it for that, but it's, it's okay for this job. So I don't, you know, these cams, they're not friends, these things. I might use them for on the saws. I think they'll work quite well. And stick with the, the other one, which is much better quality. For my beautiful face. Ew. Ew. Right, so we've got these little bolts there. They need to be cleaned up further. This will end up being our cleats. <clears throat> so these bits will be the what? That'll be, what, the BC you have to, have to travel through that to work. At the moment, it can't. So that one needs to be cleaned up a bit more. Well, they both do. Because I have a load for it. So we'll put that in the voice. Do, 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 do. I'll clean one face up first. And I know this is an overkill, but I just like my plane. This is my favourite plane. The weight of it might have it, it just gives you stability. A bit like me. You see? I've got a little bit of tear out up here, I'll get rid of that. That's good. These are too long at the moment, and they're going to also be the um, 
the knob as well, so I'll cut a bit off the end of that. So, uh, yeah. It's going to be good. Baby. Oh, what have I done there? Use a hand plane like that, sometimes it's a good idea. Especially if they're not going to be glued faces, which are not. Even then, it doesn't really matter too much. A bit of candle wax. Or, PT, or PTFE spray if you've got some. Oh, it feels so good! And we'll flip that over. Put the two surfaces there. Or eight. You can actually, you know, put the voice together if you like. Be that way around. Oh, and your plane is nice and sharp, and your, your bottom is flush. You've got the flush bottom, you know. And when you make these bolts, you need to make sure that you allow a lot... But do the cleats where they've got to be a lot of free space in it. You can't make them tight because these will swell up in their width and they get jammed inside the cleat. Might put it a bit lower down because it's pinching, meaning it's not. Uh, that's better. That's better, better, better. That way they'll be both exactly the same width. Bum, 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 bum. Thirty. Good, good, good. But the back's got to be done as well. If there's a few strikes on there, a few passes. That'll be the back. Oh, it's so smooth. Checking for square. Not too critical. That's perfect, though. Same on that one. Normally, you obviously, check for square. You'd use your little, um, yeah, square. It won't be this little engineer square or six inch engineer square. Oh, perfect. Parfait. But oh, you can just look at that and think, mm, that's okay. Um, the thing is, though, if you're obviously jointing them together, there are techniques, like, for instance, if you want to join two boards together, if you actually plane those boards together, if you have gone a bit skew if with the plane, so effectively you tilt your plane a bit one way too much or something, and it's become not square on the end, both face, both pieces of wood that you're planed, if you're plane them um, together like so, both pieces will be planed together. So when they go together, they'll actually go together perfectly in the angle because the angle is uh, is correct and if you use a machine like this um like my uh sur surface plane my jointer plane uh, let you know electric machine what you do is you you can mark your all your boards you've got your boards set out your tabletop for instance you'd mark them like top bottom top bottom top bottom yeah or inside outside and um what you'll do is you always make sure when you run across the fence of your planer electric planer you always put that mark to the fence so it, you know, all, all the insides to the fence and all the outsides, you turn it around and, and you know, turn the, the other bit of wood around in the other direction. And that way, if there is slightly inaccurate in the sense that you're not 100% square with that sur surface plane or your jointer plane, it won't matter. It'll still go together perfectly because it's been compensated for. Because you've opposed that angle on the opposite side, so it can't wreck itself. So that's cool. Just got to put in the back of that one. I haven't done it yet. Beautiful. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Right. So I need to remove a piece of the end of one of these. And um, that will then become the knob for the top. But also, we've got to chamfer the ends as well. So I put like a little uh, 45 on the ends, not all the way down to the bottom edge, and you part way. So, for instance, if that was going to be the 45, it would be like across, across there. If you can see that. So, um, might be the knob. 
section. So this now needs to be ripped down to the, you know, the correct length, which in this case is 150 mil. You'll be careful of the shorter ones. If you make these cleats too big, you, don't, you can't get enough travel on your actual, um, on your bolt. So you have, you have to obviously bear that in mind. You've got enough travel, it ain't gonna work, is it? Do, 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 do. I thought I had a, thought I had a steel rule in there a minute ago. Do I keep losing things? I do, don't I? Never mind. Said of Right, so it's got to be 150, which is there. Remember, we meant two at a time. These are the babby ones, these are. The other thing is, if you make these too big, that's going to look disproportionate. It looks silly. So this this will be a square piece taken out of there, yeah. So that'll be um, the actual knob. So I'm gonna go to the camera. Well, this is the camera. To the saw. We'll do this on the radio alarm saw. Did you quite simple little things to make? Hello, Bernard. Oh, late again. He says late again. Hello, Joe. Oops, got to go. Just drop drop to a like in the video. Oh, cheers, buddy. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll boop the old like button. Will you be kind, everybody? <laughs> Uh, have you uh, a mouse in your workshop? I saw it sprint away under your workbench in the corner where you're low. Really? Quite possibly. I. Oh, that's a bit concerning. But what? No, I didn't even see it. Oh. This is kind of like a barn, so I suppose it's quite possible. We do have mice. Uh, da, 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 da. Put it back up there, let's move this over half for a second. You can't hear what I'm saying, I know. You can hear what I'm saying, but you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I don't know what went wrong with the internet earlier when I was doing this, when I first started up. All of a sudden, it wasn't the internet, I wouldn't talk to the router, the actual, because I've got a wireless router that feeds this machine. And that's connected with a LAN to the router in the house. Oh, I'm so looking forward to getting that new internet. That's going to be so good. Oh, I've got a beer over here. Oh, oh God, it's in the bay. The bay uh, de Flandre. The Flandre. <laughs> oh, we're back again. Oh, there we are. Cheers. So yeah, uh, next day, James, we're going to go for that saw over there, and we'll, um, I can bring you a little bit closer. The cables are so long. These stream cams are good, but you, they don't like long cables, and they have to be, ten, there's a 10 gigabit cable on there. So it was, um, everything's so expensive though, you know, it's just like, um, Oh, well, you don't know. I'm getting confused. Um, everything's so extremely expensive. You, if, you, huh. if you need anything that is decent to do the job, like, for instance, if, you, if you're dealing with video, it needs, they need good quality cables. Um, but it's such a pain because uh, I've got so many flipping cables. I feel I'm constantly buying cables. Just gets from A to B. <laughs> And I'll just um, increase the uh, let's put that on. You over here, you. Right. There. Yeah, I'll just um, increase the amount of USB three ports on the computer, which clearly is, is a massive improvement, and, and they're working, which I'm pleased about because the camera that we're on at the moment, that particular camera, is very fickle. Regarding its um, regarding its uh, connection, right. So you've got to be really careful and not chop your fingers off.
Because that wouldn't be fun. No. So there you go. There's two bits there. I don't recommend anyone doing that. It's just that I've done it so many times. You know, so you get to know your tools, if it makes any sense. And also, I make a good snuff video if I do it live. What do you think? Oh, no? Okay. All right, then now what I'm going to do is I want my 45s. I've got a jig for that. Not an Irish jig, no. A jig, jig, jig. That's a rare. This is my 45 degree jig. I like jigs. Jigs are good. See, I don't like to alter this setup with this saw. Because I've, I've set this saw up so it's perfectly 90 degrees. Things like you keep moving it to 45 and stuff like that. And this saw going all sorts of angles. But no, as soon as you mess about it like that, it's um, you'll just throw everything off. Don't screw. It'll be a bloomin' nightmare. There it goes. <clears throat> and now what we're going to do is we're going to create the 45s on the end of each of these. So I know, what I'll do is make it simple. Oh, you can't see it from there. That's why I need another camera. Um, I'm going to cut one. Then I'm going to mark the end here on the fence. So I mark the end of the fence because both these pieces of timber, even though I'm doing two of them, are exactly the same length. So I'll mark the, that part of the fence, and all I'll do is then I'll flip it over, and it'll do exactly the same on the other end then, you see? And the same, I'll repeat it onto this one. So I've got to work out whereabouts I want it to be, but it's just that, was it repeatable? Or was it the same? So I'll cut that one first. Like that. It's 45 like that. And now what I'll do is, oh, I shouldn't remove that, so I should have put my mark there first. I know you can't see it, and I do apologise for that. That will come later. So I'll push that against the blade. Pause and stop. There you go, there. And then I'll mark the fence there. Now all I've done is mark the end of that piece of wood. So I'm going to flip it around like so. Remember, everything we're doing tonight can be done with hand tools. You know, I think I'll be done with machine. That one done. I've done it for both ends. There. Nat's whisker. So that basically you've got this little arrangement here, and that little that one of those will be the the actual uh, knob. The knob will need to be a little bit narrower, so it's got to be taken down a bit smaller. Um, but I do that on the, on the linear sander here, but it's got to be slightly slightly narrower than the actual shoot bolt itself because. Once I just take the arrows off these corners, so it's all you know, so it's tacked on smooth, that'll be you'll end up with a weird joint here where you've got two arrows, two rounds coming together. So that needs to be slightly smaller to allow for that. But we're, we're, we're a bit closer. So we've got one, two. So now let's go back to the uh, overhead camera. La 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 she's coming back Sunday, is Caroline. She'll be back and she'll better clear up all the mess that I've made. <laughs> she'll be happy. Uh, I, thought, I thought part of the, the square hole machine restoration that provides a bit of snuff when you're trying to get the motor off. Yeah. Standing on some steps, I know, <laughs> on the bench. That won't be the first time I've done things like that. Right, anyway, let's get the other camera. There we go. Above the bench it is. So now we've got components here for two bolts. So that's going to go on top there like so, and that's going to go on there like so. That'd be a bit, man, but probably better there, just off centre normally. This is allowing enough room here for, for the latch. <clears throat> now, the problem here, 
It's my, I haven't made any this small. I've only made the, I made the 300s and the 200s. Made loads of those. This is the first time someone's actually asked me to make a 150. You know, and um, might be a silly idea. This might have to be a lot thinner to um, to allow for that. Otherwise, it might not. If that's too thick here, and then that too thick, there might not be enough room left for the travel, because obviously that's got to be able to slide backwards and forwards. So it's got to be able to slide so that comes out of the other one. Ah, well, I need to work this out, don't I? So if that's in there like so, like so, but it needs to be able to quite hard, isn't it? Oh, my. That right width might have to be made a bit a bit thinner, a bit narrower, or just run through the thickness a couple more times. So from there, basically, then that's that has to have enough gap between that and that. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be thinner, narrower. So um, what does that's the worst? That's the worst face, and also let's. A lot of waste loads of wood, so let's um, do, 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 work out how many or how lot, how much material we're going to have to cut. It's going to be six of these, probably all of it actually. Anyway, so eight sixty four. Not six eight eight yeah, sixty four. No, what am I talking about? Forty eight, what we're talking about, yeah, forty eight. So that's <clears throat> forty eight centimetres. Do, 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 do. So these really ought to be ripped down to about there. Or that much removed. <clears throat> I was not enough travel. Normally they're a lot more chunky than that, but also if you expect you have to shrink everything down for it to be able to function if things are smaller and shorter. So forty eight is sixty five. You got away from that. Fifty two. Now the reason I'm very um Frugal about wasting material, even though they're tiny little bits of wood anyway. You know what I mean, that's because a lot of my products that I make and stuff that I make for Etsy and have in the website are they're quite, everything small. So it might be for some people, it might be oh, it's just waste wood. Me, I, I get very little waste wood, hardly anything, in fact. Let's come back over here again. Oh, there we go, all right, back on the old thickness. Sir. Worry about this uh, cable. We'll pull the cable in. Do, 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 do. See how messy it is over there at the moment. Got to keep pulling everything out at the moment to actually be able to um, oh do stuff. I, I've, I've mounted the other monitor opposite me. I can see over there now the other monitor. Um, I'll just show you. There you, are. there you go. There's the other monitors up there now. So I've got this one this side now. The computers there, are. and then I've got the other monitor up there. It's handy because if I'm facing, I can see what's going on. And if somebody's, you know, obviously got the if I've got the window big enough, I can see what's going on there. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. Let's just Ooh. He's adjusting.
it's a bit smaller. So just flip it down so it's a little bit, a bit more narrow. So I've got more um, room to move the the actual bolt back to and you know to and fro. Otherwise, it'd be a problem. La 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 la. la. Back on the hmm. right, back on the other camera. There we go. So we now got our. Oh my god, that flipping um, protest bill, and the flip. Uh, well, all of them. Even that. Oh no, crack! Even that flipping them. Um, oh, took an airbus away. Oh, what you call it? The um. Uh, online safety bill. They have an excuse to pass load this other stuff under the under the radar, just like they are with the Brexit bill. I know everything's sort of you know getting a bit held up, but it's oh, it's shocking. No being considered to go onto the list of uh, uh, human rights abuses. But against their own people. It's just mad thing. What the hell's going on? <laughs> right, well, I'm not going to cut this yet. I'm just going to mark it all out, allowing for the, the, the thickness of the cut. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut our recesses. I just realised something. Thought, what way have I done that? It's that way. So it must be that way. Okay. Let's start again. It's this face. Now the curve for the blade is three millimetres, so you have to allow for that between each one. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is I don't want to, um, well, I don't want to be working with little tiny, tiny pieces of wood. It makes no sense. Let's find a little three millimetre space there. Do, do, do. I've got one over there, a soft one I can use. That's three millimetres. Bom, 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 bom. Yeah, that'll probably do it. That's two millimetres. It's time we've got the thickness of the actual pencil it's, itself. That's a millimetre and a half. So. Mm, that's no good. Oh, hang on. Oh, perfect. That is three millimetres. Just allow for the... Um, what's that? Okay, so that is... Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Am I blocking that camera in my head? Probably. Oh. Well, I don't miss her. She'd been to visit her uncle. There needs to be a plasterer. And this guy's got um, asbestosis. As well. But he's also... Suffering with carpal tunnel syndrome, which I've, which I have, although mine I've, I have had operations, so mine is nothing like his, is at the moment. His is you know chronic, and they do have the operation in the UK, but when, you know, we'll see. Last, I tell you what, I wouldn't recommend anyone. I think great as a hobby or something like that, but I wouldn't recommend anyone getting into construction industry. I really wouldn't. Buggers your body up. It really does. Um, Darren's father-in-law, he suffers a bit. He's um, he has a condition where he basically seizes up. His his bones are trying to. He's got like an overactive immune system, and his bones are. Are trying to fuse together constantly, so you get up in the morning stiff as all, you know, stiff as a board. Um, and when you take medication like anti uh, um, immunity thing, it's obviously on COVID was a bit of a 
um, a bit of a problem. Be careful, although they weren't. One, two, three, four, five. One more. And that one there, I might scrap anyway, so that one's a bit nasty. If I can get another one out of that. Oh, I can't. That's just... what I'm gonna... Actually, what I'll do is, I'll keep them there, but I'm going to work from this end now. I'm working from the opposite direction now, so that's 75 there. And then we do 75 there, so that one needs to go. That one's scrap. Yeah, but it's best is is no fun, so he's got hardly any breath, <laughs> you know, he's constantly um, coughing, so that isn't great, um, so that's no good, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and now we've got to think about, okay, about this, it's got to be able to slide through that, so basically, that's going to have a cutout, so it'll be like a bridge, over the, you know, so that's effectively a bridge, over the top, am I still there, I'll put my head on the cap, no, that's right, <laughs> right, so if, <coughs> <laughs> so what I might do to simplify things, you can make a template, but the template can be the first one. So what I'm going to do, one of these I'm going to cut off. So the first one I'm going to cut off, and I'll use that as my, uh, my prototype. Oh, sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, Jagu Land Rover. Seem to be, sounds like they're going to be buggering off to, uh, well, not the whole thing, but their batteries. They're sourcing their batteries from Europe, Poland, I think, or somewhere like that. There's a variety of different places. Sweden, as you know, they got their um, they found that uh, a vein or whatever of this uh, oxides, rare earth um, minerals. So that will be probably about fifteen years before they can extract it, which is a bit of a problem. <coughs> Looks good. So this one, so we'll find the middle on there. Straight enough to be fifteen. So. Do, 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 do. Uh, 15, but I've got to allow a bit more than that. But we'll do that on the prototype. So that's the actual size. But I'm going to, go, I'm going to make sure we take a bit more out. So we'll do that on the saw, and then I'll just use that, that first one to template to cut all those, and I'll leave them on there to make it easier to handle. So this one will cut as an individual piece, and I'll use that as my um, template. Oh, gone the wrong way again. No, I'm not. Oh, that's correct. Sorry. That is correct. I was getting confused. Confused.com. So that's got to be removed. That's going to be sawn off there. That create the first cleat. But I will make this slack. So even though I've sort of measured it sort of tight, yeah, it's tight, it needs to be slack because wood grows in its width with moisture. So it's going to grow. grow across that you know across its width so in the winter this time of year for instance it's going to be thicker than it will be in the um yes i haven't done my light yet <laughs> um it will be thicker than it is in the summer when it's really hot and dry so i don't have to be overly uh overzealous with the actual space here and the clearance i give it but it needs to be enough to allow for any movement otherwise it'll just bind there's various ways we can cut this out I could cut this out on my radial on my radial arm saw, which we might just do, just to do the, these two vertical cuts, and then clean up with the band saw, or we could cut the whole lot out with the radial arm saw, or it's a bit all sorts of way to do it with hand saw, you know. Um, but being a good cut, I'm going to use the radial arm saw to cut part way across here, and then I'll do what I'll do. I'll just take this down to the band saw, and I'll do a cut into that corner then i'll come back on that then just clean up with a chisel
you could even cut that on the uh, uh, it'd be a bit of a rough cut though so I'm not going to do that you could even cut that on the uh, Hollages and water stuff that we installed the other day Arr, right over there we go right so what we're going to do is we're going to use that radial arm saw and we're going to cut part way down yeah I can do that by actually raising the saw blade up and I'll do a parallel cut across there and then I'll clean that out with the band saw which will just find you There we go, a little bit. Possibly a bit right, let's have a Right, first way to do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this first one, I think we're going to use the radial arm saw for the whole thing. You don't want to see that, do you? <laughs> And that's done literally all with the uh, radial arm saw. It's probably the best way of doing it, actually. It's the cleanest way. So as long as you do enough passes, you sort of do a half width cut every time. Um, as you can see, that's pretty good. Anything what I didn't do and didn't think about doing was um, uh, cutting the ends and that before I actually move the saw up. And I don't want to move it down again yet. So I'm just literally going to use a band saw and I'm going to just cut that off there and I'll trick clean it up with the other saw later. Once we've got the other bits done. Oh look at the lights! No, a light is seeming blind everyone like that. Turn that around. Saw blade that sounds like me, it's got a bit of a kink in it. Right, so we've got that one cut out so far. Obviously, the ends need trimming, and now I can um, bring you onto the other camera. Why is that not doing anything? Right, uh, let's have a look at the uh, chat so I don't. Forget about people. Great friend and former neighbour, Don Wade of... Oh my God, really? He's been a plumber working on a lot of industrial heating systems, many lagging with asbestos. Yeah, have you seen them do that stuff? My God. Yeah. That's what... Um, well, 
that's what Barry, that's one of the things that he used to do, was, um, well, not plumber, part of his job when he was younger, was lagging systems on submarines. And it was literally, uh, the, the uh, specials came in bags and they kind of mixed up with all that plaster Paris. So, uh, yeah, not great. And uh, now he's suffering for it. You know, it's like all these stuff we work with. You know, even the stuff that I work for, they work with, they they don't tell you, do they, that the stuff potentially can kill you. You know, like the glues that I, I use quite a lot, I haven't done for a while, mind. Um, like the cascomite, powdered wood glues. They're carcinogenic. You know? So you, you obviously got to take a lot of care. So, um, yeah, it's a worry. So I'm waiting for that end, though. Remember, we, because it's got a crappy bit of wood in the middle there. So the depth is... Not... No, I'm getting confused. What have I done wrong here? Because that, not... that one appears to be... What have I done wrong here? Did I start at the wrong place? That's the right place. To there. Oh, I see. That's right. That's not all right. That's not right at all. Right, so what I'm going to have to do is... Uh, I'll work that one from this side. Because for some reason I've gone the wrong way. Because that was supposed to remain. Oh, I see. Allow for the cut. It will be all right on the night. You've got to allow for the thickness of your pencil as well. So this side, that side for that one, and that side for that one. So I'm going to take this back over to the uh, raid alarm saw, and uh, we'll put the slot in. Oh, come back. Arr, we're back. <laughs> Right, uh, yeah, I know, it's, um, it's horrible. Because asbestos, you know, you know what it does, it literally tears your pleural layers of your lungs because the, the asbestos fibres are they're like hooked, they're barbed, they're double barbed. Um, it gets into your lung, not the forever chemicals do, it get into your, your lungs, but it's just constantly scratching your lungs, constantly, scratch, 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 causing scar tissue, eventually you've got reduced lung capacity. They call it a disease, but I suppose it's not really a disease, is it? It's a physical condition. It's nasty. So, yeah, eventually get to a point where you can't breathe anymore. Not very helpful. Yeah, so, so, so I I wouldn't recommend anyone get into the building game. It's too intense, and they expect a hell of a lot of you these days. Even though there is a lot of um, safety precautions in place now, it's not enough. La 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 la. Double check. It's good. The whistling. But to make sure you pull the saw past the centre point, otherwise you'll get a flat cut.
One more pass. Go and flip around the other side now. Whoa, we're getting there. You know, if I, I nip my fingers, I guess it goes to be the grip, a piece of wood. The fingers are dry, you can't grip it. You mentioned, I mentioned the other day about um, spraying a bit of water onto your vice that allows you to, um, allows the vice to grip there. Sounds mad, I know. Last one. Look at the And while it's still moving, when I hear that blade start touching the bottom, I know it's in the right place. Cut right through. So that's what we've got to do now. We need to cut these all the way through now. Um, make sure I don't damage or cut in the wrong places. Is <laughs> could be a bit silly. That's annoying. And it ends up the end I cut with the bouncy. Then we have the one I didn't cut, well, I cut the end of that bouncy, not a bit of the bouncy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got six. Uh, I need that as well. Right, we've got one, two, three. Three ones there have a camera. La 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 la. There we go. We've got one, two, 
three, and then we've got one, two, three. They've got to be cleaned up as yet, and obviously the, we have the bolt section, the shoot bolt. Is it on the, oh, sorry, that's good. Now the one that's got to be fed into, and I've got to do it, oh you fool Marcus, has to be slightly bigger. Unless I've got one that is on the big side, because that one's a tight one. Oh, in tight, but it's tighter. We'll find the slackest one. Could be that one. You need one, um, I think I'll, probably, I'll just reset the saw up, slightly wider. So when it, when the shoot bolt is um, in the close, it, just in case there's any movement in the door, you've got to make sure that can slide in nicely. D-D-D-D-D. Alright, that one's good. Well, the other option I've got is actually make it a bit thinner. <laughs> There's enough play in there, isn't there? A bit narrower, not thinner. Now, the other thing I've got to check for and to make sure of, even though it's not, you know, <clears throat> not together yet. These two here, if that's the jam of your door, they'll be together. So within reason, they'll be somewhere near together. That idea will be just through like so. And that needs to be really just about there. So ideally, you need enough travel. What about there, even? You need enough travel on this. Yeah, so when that's in the open position, the distance there is enough to remove that bolt out of that. Which I don't think it is at the moment. Be there. Close. Yeah, that's fine in the closed position. Check, unless I have that a bit further, Ooh, not what I like. It gives you 30 mil, it's not going to be enough. Ooh, could be, could be, but it's... so I don't want to lose the chunkiness of them. I don't know if 150 mil ones are such a good idea. To be fair, not everyone's going to want the big ones, are they? Right, so, so one oh, a bit of wood. So that's there, like so. And that's all the way through. Oh, that clears it completely. Right, uh, and that goes to there. Be better if it was more there. I'm mumbling now, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> mumble, mumble, mumble. And that'll be out of the way. That's good. That's good. That's, that'll be fine. Just got to make sure you get that in the right place. But we do need to make sure, I've got a funny thing, this is, I'd like a little bit more free space on that. So I might just uh, make these a little bit more, a little bit narrower. Because it can grow. I know it's winter, and you'd assume that the wood has already grown. I won't guarantee that, to be fair. I'm just going to run the plane over that a couple of times. Together. To make sure, or try to make sure that they're... Little, oh, hmm. Okay. I'm not the blade didn't you um, the plane might be that way down, but I put it on top of a shade if you look. <laughs> so it's not touching the Oh, that's better. That's loads better. Right. Yeah, that's good. Happy with that. So now what we've got to do is we've just got to clean all these bits and pieces up. These have got to be made a lot smaller. So it needs to be trimmed down. Quick do that. I'm going to use this little jig here. Because that allows me a little bit more control. Well, I'll do little bits. Just don't lose my fingers. Yeah, up 
plaisir de Right, so I know that little knob's a little bit smaller, so narrower than the actual bolt itself, and um, the reason for that is so when this is we take all these arises off with the um, little rotor there, little palm rotor. We don't end up with um, a nasty kind of round going into a round. If it makes it looks ridiculous, look ridiculous. Right, so now we need to. Uh, well, we need to rope them. My mat is on the floor, so I can stand on them. My fat body and my little feet. Fat body, little feet. All right. What we're going to do now? What we need to do. Using this rubber mat, these are like. Well, these are our washing machine mats. That's what these are. So what we're going to do is we're going to route everything up. Take off the arises, basically. And once we've done that, we can sand everything. And we use the air, airline sander for that. So, let's grab this little route. I'm going to make sure I've got a little bit of oil on the roller. There's a little roller on the end of the guide roller. That's spinning at a ridiculously high speed. A tiny route a bit. So, um, just so it lasts a little bit longer. Let's stick a little bit of oil on it. Otherwise, it'll break. Because the roller, that roller's tiny, I think you see it. A tiny little roll on in there. And that basically is going to run across the workpiece, like so. So I'll put a bit of oil on so I'll let the oil run off first. Before I get carried away and splash oil over everything. Now the camera above is actually now mounted on the same mount I had microphone on, but now I've managed to get the wireless microphone working and um, I hope the sound is good. Hello, just me in videos, I hope you're well, buddy. Uh, yeah, asbestos is that silent killer. You're not wrong. The thing is, it's um, it's a bit like the set off of the NHS. It's like drip, drip, drip isn't it, of um, damage and you don't necessarily notice it all at once. Right. I've got oil on my finger there, so I've spun the oil off. You've got to be careful there, you'll fall into the cutter because the hole there, really, it would be. I could make a new base plate for it, really. But it's just, but that's, only, that's the only bit I ever use in it. I can tell you, it's not. I use it to make a sign. Those sort of surfaces are quite easy, but you really need to handhold it for these ends and see what's going on. Don't put your fingers on it though, because it hurts. Really bad idea. You know, obviously we practice health and safety here. Do as I say, not as I do. I fell in a little bit, they about to stand away. One more thing. What I want to do, I've mentioned it before, I want to set up a little, no, need another router really, set up a little router table with this bit in. So it's just literally used for taking the arrows off, nothing else. Uh. 
really be big, you know. You know it's only what, um, 300 mil square, to be enough. That way you can get your fingers anywhere near it, have you? So they must do. I don't want to do it with this though, because I use it there for the signs, it's all handheld stuff. And um let's get another little rate here. Nothing special, it's a cheap one to do. Okay, so that one's damage taken off. So these two bits now can now be sanded up, but I've got six of those to do. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. And two of those. Symbols though, symbols. We don't do those four, let's just sand them. You can end up overdoing it. And of course, more, do more harm than good. It looks awful, then. You've got to take the arrows off wherever it's really needed, really, at all. I really want to make a um, down to our table. It's like a box there with little holes in it attached to the um, dust extractor or the back. Oh, shop back. Quite hands when I get hold of a bit of pin board. Remember the old pin board? You used to put all your like, hooks on it and stuff. Hard board, a bit hard board. But the uh, better mind for this one. I've always got to drill those holes. Here's hands up, baby. Really good for sanding, though. Well, the rest of it, you literally just. In fact, there's one there I wanted to put on the linen shelf. Oh, I noticed that one. There's another one, or it was just that one. And that one. There's two there we'll put on the linen shelf. So a bit of a mark in them. Now, sander wise, oh, how, oh, 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 and they forgot. These need a, a little go. These are going to be a bit tricky. No, they need a bit of sanding. Before I sand them, I need to, these are just countersunk. Then there's no plugs going in these, so um, I need to work out exactly where the holes are going to go. We can split into two. Just use the uh, little square here. We we'll do split into two. Split in two directions. Oh, that one's slightly longer. It won't matter, it's work from one side. It's trimming. 
Do 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 do. The thing is, if you were doing it individually, you could you'd put a stop. You can't put a stop. How I was doing it, um, but I'm looking at that. That one's that one's definitely too long. But worry at the moment. I'm just going to mark this for the moment for, first with the um, because I can correct that quite easily. All right, first of all, I need to mark. Well, I'm going to put the screw holes. Do, 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 do. Actually, they won't even up. These are all good. Yeah, it's just that one. Come back. Bum, 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 bum. Right. Take a gnat's whisker off that one. That's also when I walk on the ship. Oh, who's having tea? Oh, at least I have a cup of tea. Everything's still good with the pellet stove. Yeah, so that's okay. It's working well. How about gingers? How's your pellet stove? It's um, it's quite chilly. <laughs> I have to say. Obviously, it must be really cold over there. I bet. You can say that. I'm going to the Linisha. Is that sander? A big old belt sander. Oh, that. Be able to see I just realised I made a mistake. I just took my pencil box off. <laughs> what an idiot. Never mind. It's having you look nicer. <laughs> well, a bit more of that one, I think. 
Oh dear. <laughs> What I normally do, I normally um do all my uh holes first. Get all the can sunk holes in before I do, you know go any further. So then you sand off any any uh splinters you might fall. Oh, okay, is that one? Just run that one on the linisher and those on the linisher. Ah, things we have to do. Okay, a little knobs, and there's the, the bolts themselves, they're a little bit more uh, tactile <laughs> sanding than my little sanding pad, which you've probably seen this before, I've, sort of, I've shown you this before, it's literally just a piece of board the house is taken off and there's a velcro on it and then you just use the velcro back you know uh hook on the hook and loop piece of sandpaper and grip some on there and these screws poke just through and it sort of boards them sliding about but obviously don't do that if you want to protect your surfaces and then we're gonna get on to i bought four tons of pellets oh my god get me through through the fuel price is still more than four Four dollars a gallon. Oh my god, that's cheap. You won't pay what we pay for a gallon of fuel. Four point five five liters. No, I paid one seventy nine a liter the other day. Euros, which is similar to dollars, not far off. Well, it's not the same, but it's not far off. But it's yeah. It, so what's that? Four point. About eight, around eight euros a gallon. Not great. That's diesel, man. Yeah. Heat and fuel, I don't know how much that is. I know that the, um, oh, the petroleum, which is like paraffin, is, you know, they're quite popular here, paraffin heaters, but not at the moment. The food is expensive to run. At 45, um, well, I think the cheapest thing is 35 so far um, for 20 litres of um, paraffin. Which isn't great. I 
I thought, I have to admit though, we haven't been making uh, unnecessary journeys. I'm trying to uh, obviously spend as little as we possibly can on fuel. I mean, that's been very mild. Oh, it's very cold now, but it has been very mild. So we, we've been quite lucky with that. You know, I've been in the workshop, you know, doing stuff outside, what have you, but um, with this uh, temperature we have at the moment, so quite handy. I don't have to put the heating on. I'll just put the pellet pe pe burners on today. But it's um, not all day, though, so I haven't been in there. I'll put it on for the dogs. <laughs> bit cold, you say, especially Wally. Wally shivers like crazy, dude. It's a bit cold. He shouldn't do, I know, he's a dog, but... But eating on for the dogs? Yeah, of course. Fucking cold, poor little boy. Oh, little Lulu's gone back. Um, We were... I was babysitting for a couple of days. Lulu, which is some kind of little... It looks like a mini Dobin and Pincher, I don't know what it is. Um, I wasn't that keen on that first. He's, he, he's warmed, he's, he became a bit um, needy. But he, he's kind of, he, you know, he warmed to me a little bit, to be honest. Or he warmed him. Probably, you know, if, um, I wasn't that keen on him because he doesn't settle. He's just oh, constantly running around all over the place. I caught him earlier, he, he literally made himself a nest in the dog basket. You know, he's a tiny little dog. The biggest poos ever. I don't know how he manages that. Oh, he'd eat, I'll tell you. Hungry little fella. You've got to be careful though. You got, you'll, you'll basically eat, you know, I'll eat and eat until I'm sick, he'll go. That's what he does. And then he'll eat it again. The sea. Lovely. My granddaughter's telling me, yeah, it says, he ate my poo once. <laughs> she, was, you know, she was very young at the time. <laughs> but when she's um, potty training and uh, she had an accident, you know, where Nick, yeah, Nick was on, and she had an accident. And, um, well, no, Nick was on, sorry. And, um, Lulu come, come along. Lulu's a boy, by the way. It's a boy dog. Uh, for Lucifer. <laughs> and uh, he just ate, it, he ate the poo. So he's a bit of an odd one. All right, then we've got these two little knobs. Some, you can't do everything on, you know, well, you can, but you, you risk of just chewing it all up and making a right old mess. So sometimes you have to use. You know, a bit of hand sand and to make sure there's nothing sharp. But these things they look so cool as well when they're in, um, installed. Well, you know, my, uh, my uh, our dressing room doors in our bedroom. This has just got these bolts on, but bigger versions of this. But we have gone very, uh, how to put it, we're very wood, woody in our house, a lot of wood in our house. Just, you know, so I can make it. A lot of the woodwork is actually from natural sources, like straight off the tree. Clean the bark off with a draw knife, what have you. And, you know, and make it all nice. It's quite tactile. There is something about wood. And it's regenerative. Apparently, you can grow concrete. All right. <laughs> so that's going to go on there, and you see it's slightly narrower than that, because it allows for that arras that's been taken off. It just looks, it feels, and looks a bit neater. Now what we've got to do with these, we need to um, drill a hole. I'm just counting them. They're not be they're not been dropped to plugs. These ones have, aren't. You know, don't show it in the 
drawing. Oh, another thing I'll do. Just run sandpaper, and you can run that round there, but I, th I think it looks a bit, a bit shitty. Right, so I need. Oh, my lights! Light is seen! Oh, it's back again. It's got to move. I will sort that out. I think that's a job for tomorrow. I moved the monitor today. Which is a bit of a job because I had to get all the um, cable out. Quite tricky. This is really rubbish paper. I think it came from Action or all them cheaply stores. It's really bad. But because I've got it, I'm going to use it. I won't say it's bad, it just doesn't last five seconds. It falls to pieces. So, it's not that long to use it for, it'll be fine. Although, it, it might be that, but Action did quite good stuff now, though, so it might not be Action. Some some cheapy cheapy shop. 150 grit. Just run it around there like that, really, just to pay off that fur. That's it. Don't need any more than that. God, it's rubbish paper. What try to use it when you're doing a bit of wood turning. You want to sand your wood turning. You might as well bother. <laughs> Nightmare. Well, emery board's quite good for this, you know. Um, you know, what you use for filing your nails. Yeah, I did a really long live stream yesterday on the other channel, on all shorts. And although, I think I went all right, but I, I did notice people dropping off quite quickly. Um, it's really hard to keep people's attention when you, because you've got your concentrate on one thing, and it's not really, it's, I think it's going to get a bit boring for people, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to think of something regarding that. And um, there must be another solution. Because obviously it's quite hard, to, you know, obviously when I get a bit more, get better at it, well then, I'll be less um, paranoid. <laughs> also, it's late at night as well, obviously. Right. Good. Two more. Let's go there like that. And I'll draw those holes. This is 150 grit paper, so it's not very coarse. I tend to go down to 320 when I do any um, fine sanding work. But I don't think it really matters on this. Oh, splinter. Move that. I'll draw these holes in the pillar drill. La 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 la. Right. Oh, I'm really disappointed that we're gonna, that, you know, with Keir Starmer and what have you. But like I say, what what choice have we got? See, so it's got quite nice, though. Yeah, quite cool. Right. So I need to drill the holes. Well, pretty simple things to make, aren't they? You know, and that's obviously going to be glued and I usually put a screw in the back of it as well, gently, because you can split the block. Or, actually, no, or a nail. I'll just use a nail gun. Well, I think I'll do that in this case because it's, um, 
it's quite narrow. And as I do it, I'll make sure I've probably put a clamp on there at the same time. I'll show you in a minute. First of all, let's um, drill these holes. I've got to do three at a time because last time I was getting a bit carried away. And um, let's make sure they're all exactly the same length. Oh, this is longer than this one's Longer. That's it, that's that group. Yes, and I've already marked this once. Like an idiot, I sounded. <laughs> So, off to the pillar jaw. Off! Off with the head! Alright, there you go, that's the bit I want. La 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 la! Alright, let's move that chair. Change that camera. Oh, what? oh, I need to do that voice activation, don't I? La da 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 Oh, I can't, I need to close the closer, oh, I can't really. Oh, I don't know. Long that cable. <sighs> Go this way. If you'll get caught on anything, pull the wire out, that'd be really annoying. That's what I need more. More cameras. I'm probably going to stand in front of it as well, aren't I? Right. This is a pillar drill. Boom, 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 boom. Old Clark one, that it is. Get some quite fancy machines in that with all that digital gauge and stuff on them. Not the point of that. <laughs> that chat um chat GPT thing, and you've got the DAO one that does the drawings and stuff. It's flipping it's really good, but it, it seems to be always offline now. It's always it's basically you can't cope with the amount of demand. Oh, scrap bit of wood really. Have we got a scrap bit of wood? Well, that'll do. This will do. Hmm. Oh, some better than that. Bar oh, keeps going out. Hmm. Nice. Bum, 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Put in the scrap bit of wood. If you didn't have the bit of wood underneath the, the scrap, the sacrificial bit, you'd have a load of breakout on the bottom here. Try and, you know, prevent. Do 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 Right, we're getting there. That's pretty done. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, I marked them. The next three. You don't have to mark them. I'll be absolutely honest, though, I just usually do it by eye. Uh, at some point, we'll make a new top for that, or a sacrificial top for that pillar drill, so I can have an actual fence on it and stops. Because then you wouldn't need to mark anything, it's just, you know, everything. You just move your stops where you want them to be and then uh, and carry on like that. So that becomes another thing that you don't have to do. It's got to be a good thing, isn't it? I just thought so. Now we need to camera and sink them all. So we'll use this machine again because it's just a better job. Magnets are really handy. <laughs> So I'm going to use a screw here as my guide, and I can set the depth of this if I want to, so every single one is goes in exactly the same. We don't need that on there. So do the same depth for the cancelling for every single screw. If you don't, you end up with some screws, heads, you know, some are going to be more sunken than the others, but also the width of the actual cancelling will be, um, won't be the same in every single one. It'll just look steady. I'll just make a, uh, a man of mine top. I've had one on there before, but it got well, it got damp and just swelled up, made it a cheap pull, so it's useless. Um, so I'll make another one to go on here, but with an adjustable fence on it, just to make which was the stops. I'll just make life so much easier, right? So I've got a stop on the side of this, I can loose this on the side here, you see, and I can, I can bring this down to wherever it needs to go, and then if I Right, so I'll do one first. Make sure that screw head is how I want, just, just below the surface, just in case the wood shrinks back and it causes that to be proud, the screw head to be proud. So just, just below the surface, or about half a millimetre. That is perfect. So. I'll actually use that as a guide for the others. I set the stop, turn it off. I'll just bring it down into the one I've just done. Just tight down like so. And now if I adjust this, it's on zero, all the way round to there. That's as far as it will go. So, yeah. Okay, let's double check. That's perfect. So I'll do that on each one. And that way you'll get every single counter sink exactly the same. And you want, you're not at risk of um, having a situation where you're going to end up with some screw heart, screws lower than the others. It sounds pedantic, but it just makes it easier. Easier, there's no, you know, it takes the guesswork out of it. Yeah. 
but sometimes I also sell these with plugs if somebody wants um, to plug the screws. It's not on my Etsy store, but also on my Wally Cart website. Because I've been doing more with those websites, they've been doing a lot better recently, which I'm quite pleased about. Right, let's come back over here. But basically, we can't sunk all these. So, um, it doesn't make a difference. Why not pull the cable out? So, what I need to do, have some com something there so, that, so the um, cable can't be accidentally pulled apart. Because I've got this extension. The problem with this cable here for that camera is wired into the camera. So, it's not as I can just put a longer cable on. I have to use an extension. This is a 10 gigabit extension, this one. And um, it's quite good. But the. It's reasonably tight, but I need something to stop them being pulled apart. Come up with an idea. It might, might be a gadget. It might be. That's the trouble finding space for them, mind me. Oh, what are you talking about the pellets? Uh, what's my better pellets? Uh, whiskey or whiskey? No, whiskey. You know, I want pop. Oh, good point. Yeah. I want whiskey. <laughs> I've got. Oh, so I've got some whiskey, actually. Present. Right, look there. Um, wrap up well, gingers. Oh, crikey, yeah, don't blame you. It is, that is ridiculously, well, cold in the United States at the moment, isn't it? I can just imagine. Look at that handsome fellow up there. Look at him. Oh, he's pointing at himself. <laughs> yeah, tons or tons. <laughs> a whiskey, a whiskey. Uh, you say potato, I say potato. You say potato, I say potato. Oh, tomato, tomato. Stuff like that, isn't it? Bye all, off to work. I'll oh, take care, buddy. Have a nice evening, you too, buddy. Oh, my, we're on a night shift. Oh, God, that's not good. Uh, once we go and get our plastic sacks, we get them undercover. Yeah, because I don't even notice those sacks aren't waterproof. You'd think they'd be in plastic. They'd be, they'd be waterproof, wouldn't you? But they're not. If you, if you leave them outside long enough, they get sodden. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, we've been, we've been, this is our first year with a pellet burner, and we did it quite late, and we hadn't ordered any pellets up to now. But we hadn't had it ordered anyway, we should be getting them from the supermarket, and it's it's really dodgy at the moment, because everything's so expensive. Some places have been as much as 15 euros for a sack of um, uh, pellets, 15 kilos. Um, but we've generally been pa paying around uh, eight fifty and uh, 9.50 at the moment. Although we got loads for the 8.50 the other day. Really expensive, but they were just sort of. Uh, but if you bought them on a pallet, you get about three euros a bag. But other than that, single, you get about four euros a bag. So, um, yeah, not great, but yeah, we've been quite mild, it's been quite mild, isn't it? So, we've been quite fortunate. Yeah, speaking of storing, if you're gonna buy it for us in France, we tend to well, we were buying our wood in for wood burns because wood the house has got. I've, Installed a um, 40 kilowatt wood burn, um, uh, central heat and wood burner. There's a big old beast through just through the room next door. We had, we've put it in the barn, and it, it's a good bit of kit, it really is. But it eats wood, it's not you know, and you heat in half the house, you don't, you're not even going in, you know. What I mean, you make you wonder why you're bothering. It's just an, uh, an expense. And we had a good source of timber before, um, you know, firewood, um, from. <clears throat> John Paul and uh, he stopped doing it. So, um, so look, firewood is hard graft, hard graft, and they don't. No wonder that's getting more expensive. You know, um, Francois Bron, or was it Francois? Yeah, Francois Bron in uh, Rochechouart. They're charging about eight euros now a cube. You know, so it's um, quite pricey. I was paying thirty-five, but, uh, but he's not doing it anymore. Seventeen fifty for uh, twenty-five kilos of smokeless coal. Blimey. Of smokeless coal. Oh, well, quite you on the boat, aren't you? Of course, yeah. You've got to be careful what you put on there, and also keeping it in as well. I wouldn't have thought you'd be using a lot on your boat. Actually, I think that's really. Is it insulated? That's a good point. Actually, it might not be insulated. We're paying six eighty-five a uh, burn. Says six eighty-five a sack. Well, it's a lot less than we're paying at the moment. 
They're saying the prices should come down, but it's a supply issue. You know, we, here in France, the government's given out all these um, grants. Everyone's going, oh, get your pallet burners and stuff, like for a euro or whatever the grants were. And um, so those, those people did. And now they can't have enough pellets. <laughs> and because everything else is so expensive, such as the um, paraffin and other, other fuels, sort of really pricey. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just expensive now. It's not that easy. And not, not, not we had a period of time when we couldn't even get the flipping things. Anyway, let's get to the next stage. Shall we get to the next stage? I can't remember what I was now. Back on the other camera. Well, Ginger's, your fuel is far cheaper than ours. I don't... Your diesel and petrol. A bit of riot though, wouldn't they? Complain <clears throat> because obviously fuel costs have gone up in the United States. Verge of a riot. Let's get rid of the pencil marks. Oh, it's got, please get this done. Other oh, oh, things I've got to make. I need to make a Ghibli Cat uh, phone holder. I made a few of those. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> and uh, what else have I got to make? Uh, another. Oh, I've got to make a short uh, thermometer with a round, round dial. So I've got to make it. I've already made it, actually. It's, you know. This one I used to put the photograph on. That's, 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 I just made a load of different ones. But they did really well with the moment. They've been so, you know, really well. If it wasn't for that, we'd have been a bit of a, you know, with the YouTube views going down like crazy with the other channels. If it wasn't for Etsy, we'd have been buggered. And the kind of people with the Patreons and stuff like that, you know, we're quite, you know, relying on that. There you go. <laughs> There's no nasty bits. It's got me feel nice, you know. I mentioned something about a chair where you pedal and it's, quite, it's a sex chair. So it, it's got to be smooth enough to be in one of those. Yeah, it's a vintage one we saw in the uh, museum in Paris next to the uh, Moulin Rouge. Tell me years ago, it's not there anymore. It's just, we sh oh, they probably shut it down. <laughs> that, was such a, that was so funny. I've got a bit of a weird sense of humour though, so well, I would find that funny. Right. Well, that's that, 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 that. Let's move it over here. So now we need to fix the knobs. You've got to fix your knob, you know. You can't not fix your knob. No. It's just going to be fixed on there, sort of. Oh, just noticed that needs a bit more work there. Okay. Right, we need to fix our knob. On there, like so. We fix from behind. We've got to make sure you get in the right place. I've got a little jig for the other ones when I do the bigger ones because you know it's fairly clear cut where they've got to go. I've got to work it out for this one because you've got to make sure. See, these two are going to go together like so. Like I said earlier, there's got to be enough travel there to remove, you know, to be able to pull that in or out. That'll be that way there. So if it's there. Yeah, that's where it's got to go, I think. Move it back in again. 
that's perfect. Exactly there. Where's my pencil? Where's my lovely pencil? I do like this pencil, I use it all the time. Right, so, you can either screw from behind, I'm not I'm confident about that to be honest. The reason for that is because these blocks are smaller than the other blocks I normally do, if I put a screw in there, it is at risk of splitting, but there's a trick. What you can, there's a thing we can do. I'll tell you what, we'll do that, I can show you the trick. Just stop that from splitting. Hopefully it doesn't split. But one thing we have to make sure is, well, that we put pilot holes in and clearance holes. So I'll do that first. So I'm gonna just gonna drill a hole in that. If I can't see what at the moment it is. So um I'm gonna drill the hole right through. And I'm just gonna do it by hand, because it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be, you know, if it's a little bit screw, it ain't gonna hurt. Not for this job. So we're gonna drill right through that. It's so small a bit, I think. Oh. Oh, that one. Little trick you can do if you're worrying about, you know, not going to be true. If you had another piece of wood, argument say something like that, put it across your blade like that. If you cut a V in there, or ah, oh, perfect idea. If you had two pieces of wood to create a L shape like so, you can put that about where your hole is. There, like that, right? And then you can use that as a guide. With your drill bit when you're going down with your drill bit. Once you start to go down that way, you can take it out of the way. That bit's blunt. I thought I'd drill my door. <laughs> Where's my scrap wood? There it is. I'm going to use the counter sink that's on the, on the pillar drill already. I won't bother moving the camera for that because it's going to take a few seconds. Remember, you won't see this, or the customer won't see that once it's, when this once they fit the door, because it'll be obviously against whatever it's got to be against. A little bit sanding. I do like to sand everything; makes it feel so nice. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Right. <laughs> I don't know about you. Having you know, know the kids and all that. I don't know what it's meant by that phrase because it's like smooth as a baby's bottom. Is this when the baby's bottom is smooth? It's covered in blooming rash. <laughs> it isn't covered in rash, it's covered in the. Uh, oh, what's that? Zinc stuff. They use, um. Oh, an uh, anti calcar here in France. It's, it's like it neutralizes acid. And that's what they put, they put on, on the baby's bottoms. If you've got an happy rash and stuff like that. My daughter's quite good actually with the nappies and stuff. She's having used all uh, reusables, you know. Um with like they're not like they they used to be. I wear one all the time. Pretty might nice. Oh I nearly made a mistake. Right, what I've got to be careful of when I do this, I I need to screw that onto there. I've got to glue and screw that onto there. But what compared, if I try, oh, I'll put a pilot hole back there now. No, I've got to make sure I've got it in the right position first. And then put a little pilot hole in. It's not quite in the centre, but it doesn't matter. And obviously I don't want to go all the way through. Another trick for that, you can also put a bit of tape on the marker. Oh God, I can't use that drill bit, that's a bit. 
Maybe. Let's try that one. That'll be fair. Well, Mark didn't know, so I can take that out of the way. Phew. Didn't go all the way through. That's handy. <laughs> so, my little trick. Make sure there's no burrs. Don't want any burrs on the back, because that'll stop you from being able to get your piece of wood too. So, there's a little trick here. We don't want that from splitting, so what we do is we stop it from being able to split. Got all my clamps over there, little ones. So use, oh yeah, here's one. This will do. It's not really ideal, but that'll do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Positioning's not a problem because we put the pilot hole in. And the pilot hole dictate the position. So we're just going to make sure that is in there like so. You can do it in the vice if you like. I'm just using a G clamp. Squeeze it up, not too much. Just enough to... So it can't expand. Because we don't want it to split. I hope it doesn't split. <laughs> well, I'm showing you this. Oh, it's a great tick. Where's my roller? Rolling, rolling, rolling. There we are. Oh, that'll do. Let's get in there. Do, 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 do. Don't need a huge amount of glue on there, you've got the screw as well. Obviously, you need to use a screw that isn't going to go all the way through. Uh, that might be too long. It's thin in there, once it is too long. Too long! 35, so one is 30. Or even just or even just a 25, if I've got any. Oh my god, it'll be out. Well, then the 35s. Too long. Is it 35? Oh, dear me. These things are sent to try us. Oh, God, I'll work through that one. Don't want that one either. Well, uh, these, these will probably do it. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Right, that part of probably a little bit on the. Uh, oh, I don't know. So it's. Because the grain is in the same direction, so I'm going to push it down so it's in the hole. In the hole! So I don't get overzealous, so I'm going to use a, a, a screwdriver, as in the one you put in your hand. If I can find it. Yeah. Yeah, that's one. That's good. That's good, good, good. Ships in line. There you go. Screw that on there without that spitting in half. So that's usually a good idea. We'll do the same with the other one. Make sure you it's where you want it to be. The reason why I keep sanding between surfaces like that, because when you put, as soon as you put your drill through, you'll create a burr, and that can stop you getting that a close fit. We want a close fit, don't we? Oh, we do. Right, so I'm going to put my, that, that's going to go on there, that's going to go in there. That's correct, isn't it? In the right place, spot on. So a little bit of glue on there. Get my roller. Rolling, rolling. And this, I've shown you before, but this is a, um, Wallpaper joint roller um, with a bit of tape stuck around it so you can easily remove it, to, it when the glue builds up. I was just build up and build up a glue, which would be silly. 
I said, why don't you put tape on there? Put that clamp on. Just not have a situation. Oh, it look to explode on you. You don't want it to explode on you. You force it to cut the threads and instead of the timber giving up, basically. And it makes sure it lines up. You can leave it until it dries well if you want to, but I'm not going to. I'm very confident it's fine. <laughs> right, so do it. Like so. And then we got perfect. Parfait. And that'll be the same. Make sure it works, and yeah. Perfect. Should be perfect because it's exactly the same. So, you know, my little bolts. Like that. The reason why, um, if you're wondering why the holes, they're bigger than the, the, the clearance holes, they're quite large. And the reason for that is, wood needs space to move. So instead, of, if, if that was tight, you wouldn't be able to get any movement on the screw. So any expansion and contraction on the piece of timber, if you haven't got the clearance there. Now when I was working in London, at Cat Hill, one of the places in um, East Barnet, Brilliant Jewish butchers there. Oh, so good. They did these wonderful um, spinach and and cheese pasties. Oh, crikey. I did gain some weight when I was there. But anyway, um, we had to install all these panels. These are plastic panels, a bit like Grenfell. Yes, a bit like Grenfell. And uh, uh, resin panels. So they're literally, <laughs> you set light to those things and, you know, be really like, the resin be dripping off. So, yeah, I imagine it's one of the places that had the uh, this. That's, yeah, it's a council property. So it's another council um, uh, place that's not, yeah, it looked lovely. You know, when finished, it looked absolutely lovely. But my point being, really, was that there's a lot of expansion and contraction in these panels. And they'd, um, we had to allow for clearance. So we used what we call Monel, um, sort of a nickel alloy uh, rivets to position. So you had one fixed rivet, which is this five mil hole uh, for the river. For every other river hole, um, with these special washers with the caps go on, all stainless steel, um, had to be uh, an eight mil hole. So that allowed the panels to have a little bit of movement, so they didn't, otherwise what happens with the panels, they'll spring, they'll push out and spring. So, um, yeah, I do wonder about it. I, there's no, another one we did as well, so another one, these are quite in furrock. Um, these were blocks of, um, obviously we, you know, I was just um, got site form and, you know, my base project form on, on the East Barnet one, and I was just literally working on the one down at furrock. And, um, that was a one. There was a uh, crikey. Uh, only one, two, three, nine, nine. Or the bottom three. I can't remember now. Oh god. We didn't do all of them. We did. We did three anyway. We did three blocks. of so fourteen floors. These things were, and they had what you call um a. They weren't resin plan. They were what they called granitex. Uh, made by a company called Eternet. And uh, these granitex panels. They're, they were fibre. They were like a cement like a cement panel. But they had the face was like a granite finish, and this granite finish was, um, you know, it bonded on with resin. 
Um, I think them panels have been absolutely fine. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think there'd be an issue at all. I can't imagine them catching the like, next panel, like this panel, not like Grenfell. But like I say, that place we did in East Barnet. And the architect was Tony Trippett. And he's a crafty sort of bitch, he was. But he, in his design, he made it so all the panels on the side where all the ventilation panels were, these like the aluminium ventilation panels that ventilated the slot into the stairwell, um, he made it look like there's two T's in the design. Tony Trippett. Crafty bugger. He basically signed it. So hopefully, he might regret it now though. I imagine it's all going to have to come off. I can't imagine those panels ever being um, safe. Also, we brought up at the time when we were doing the contract, because um, we didn't specify the materials, it was done for the council. Um, and the, the floor slabs, basically you know, the concrete slab between every single floor, had a different type of insulation than the rest of the, of the actual um, uh, building uh, behind the cladding. And uh, this particular um, building had yeah, the floor slab, and we had a particular kind of insulation on there. I can't remember what it's called. It was uh, Dow Chemicals, it was made by. And I think it's Dow Chemicals. They gave off cyanide gas. Apparently, um, so we were told by some other individuals, and they didn't want to take any notice of it. But it was definitely toxic, very toxic. It's like the people and uh, the firemen, isn't it? They're, they're, you know, they're, they appear to be getting uh, unusual levels of, yeah, you know, not unusual levels, they're getting cancers and stuff because of um, exposure to, yeah, you know, the firemen, exposure to the, the to the smoke. It might not be that, it might be just a, you know, the job over a period of time. And Grenfell's just pointing his finger at it, you know. But they reckon the cancer rates have gone up. All the firemen. So, okay, there we go, there's our bolts. I think what we'll do is we'll make some latches another time. There we go. So, nice, you can finish them with some. Oh, uh, with oil. Uh, oil and wax would be quite good because then obviously you're lubricating them to work. Other than that, a bit lacquer. Just, just a simple lacquer. You know, the two mad. But I, I personally would use boiled linseed oil. Let it go off and finish off with some beeswax. Uh, simple little things. Not with any bit of a TLC in that one. Um, yeah. Cool. La 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 la. La 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 la. Hello, Toby Griffiths. Um, do I speak French? Not fluently. Um, very very broken, and I get really embarrassed about it. I really do. And not not because of lack of trying. I do have less. I have two lessons a week. French lessons a week. I just can't. I really struggle to get st sit in my head. Plus, I'm always having, um, if I'm working in area own on my own. So, um, I, I've got videos, you know, YouTube running from Alex, uh, Alexis. She, she's really good. Um, yeah, but still, I just struggle. And if I get put on the spot, I can read more and even write it to to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, now I've got. I wish there was a magic pill. <laughs> I really do, because I really, really want to learn. But I, I really, I struggle to focus on things like that, and um, I learn from my hands, you know. And I've been like that all my life. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit dyslexic. I don't know. But um, taking I do write a lot as well. To be fair, but I don't know. I, I really struggle with it. So no, I, for me to be absolutely honest with you, do I speak French? The answer would be. No, I am not fluent in French. Yes, we get by. Yes, if we get into a conversation with somebody who happens to be French, um, our biggest mistake is when we, if we, if we go full on without them realising that our French isn't very good, it's all of a sudden we get bombarded. So we, we start speaking a little bit of French and what have you, and we get absolutely bombarded, and my my head just explodes. It just really stresses me out. I just really wish I could speak, obviously, fluent French, um, conversational French. 
I don't go anywhere. That's the problem. I'm always in here. And that's always been the problem, really. So I've got no, no one to practice it on. And no, I'm not going to practice it on, on, on my live stream. No. <laughs> Just be on, <laughs> on the idiot. Uh, ADHD, possibly, possibly, I don't know. I'm all, I, you might notice me, with me and my character when I do my videos, and I am. There's something not quite right in here. <laughs> there really is, I'll tell you. <laughs> I do struggle with some things like that. £40, not £400. Oh, okay. £750 for £400 bags. £40 bags, yeah. That was during a sale. It was pretty good if it was £400, wasn't it? Oh, dear. I know. It's a bit of a nightmare of the heating and what have you, isn't it? My feet are freezing at the moment. I put the wood burner on and I f it failed. I've overfilled the wood burner. And it's the sawdust burner, actually. And when you first light it, you have to... You do half fill it, and then once it gets going, you can then top it right to the top, then and it'll just burn away merrily. Um, but I didn't, I was silly. So, I'll bring it up there, like so. Right, well, <laughs> I am going to call that uh, it now. Being so I made it, it's done, and I need to go and see the doggies. Oh, it's a couple of hours, that's okay. So, I need to go and see my doggies because they're feeling rather neglected. They are. And uh, I'll, I'll finish this door off an, uh, another time. I'll make sort the post out for it as well. Just a hanging post. I need to salvage some hinges. I, I have got a load of old wrought hinges that I can use. It's fairly chunky ones, obviously, because it's a heavy door. Um, I want to make a big old, a nice, chunky grab handle, bigger than that one, um, for it as well. I need to do maybe a carving. I mentioned about putting a mouse and stuff, and I don't know, um, on the door as well. I've got to finish this end off. The breadboard end is dry. It took a little while to dry, mind, but it's, it looks okay now. I think that's fine now. Yeah. Uh, so that's dry. Yeah, uh, that's going to be cool. That'll be cool. Anyway, thanks a lot, and uh, I hope to see you next time. I might go live again tomorrow. I'm, I'm trying my best to, to go live every day, and when I can, I'm going to... Um, get some more cameras so we can have a camera in every place you know more than one camera well we've got two at the moment well that one in the overhead camera and i but um i really want to have a camera in that area over there maybe when i can turn around to have it on the wood on the lathe or whatever so what camera over there definitely need a camera over the, okay use that saw over there a lot and obviously i use the um table saw a lot this saw over here so um that one you know, so look, to be fair, I just need probably four cameras, I think, in total. It might be enough. I think the overhead camera works quite well. I think that's quite a good idea. Uh, but yeah, you know, it is. You just uh, you just have to get on with it, don't you? And you learn as well, because there's, um, there's certain things I have to think about. And that's uh, well, it's a bit delayed. <laughs> that's very delayed. The lighting. Is that delayed that much, really? Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, so, anyway. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. So, ta-ta. Oh, okay. Oh, it's time to go. Ta-ta. <laughs>